that caucus, and then we're uh, having separate caucuses here this afternoon. Uh, I, I want to tell you one of the one of the stories in the last few weeks that uh, struck me and that I read in the newspaper is one that kind of reflects, I think, what we came to the legislature trying to uh, do. We want to stand up for middle class families in this state. Uh, in just one of those areas, uh, in the area of higher education, uh, we have we have been critical in the past of, uh, of previous legislatures efforts when it came to uh, support for our regents, institutions, and our community colleges. I just, I just read an article um, again in the last three or four weeks that says this year Iowa's tuitions at our regents institutions are the lowest they've been, in the increase are the lowest they've been since 1980. Um, I call that delivering for the middle class. I think uh, for, for thousands of families and, and kids uh, struggling to uh, provide their children uh, the opportunity to get a better life, uh, keeping those tuitions modest, those tuition increases modest is very important. Uh, I know my community college in, in Western Iowa, Iowa Western Community College, uh, had zero tuition increase this year, and all of the community colleges across the state had very modest tuition increases, and that's because we were able to provide more resources to, uh, to, to, to higher education in the state. Uh, so we're proud of that record. We've had a good discussion in caucus. Uh, we want to continue to work to balance the state's budget. Uh, as you know, we have put more money into our savings fund uh, than ever in the history of the state. Um, we have started paying for some of the property tax credits out of the state general fund. We have returned $180 million uh, to the senior living trust fund. So uh, we've done a lot of good things in terms of the state budget, but we've also recognized the priorities of, of middle class working islands uh, by doing things like providing better access to health care and better access to higher education. Uh, with that, I forget uh, well, first of all, thanks for coming today. Uh, we're still caucusing, as Senator Gronstall talked about. We did caucus this morning for uh, several hours, and we've also had the opportunity to meet with the governor. I think the big part that uh, House Democrats, and I think you'll generally see uh, Senate Democrats in agreement on is, I think the first thing you're going to see us uh, do is we want to maintain our fiscal house in order. Um, we want to get away from the budget gimmicks, which we started last year. Uh, we've got the cash reserve fund and the economic emergency fund uh, full for the first time uh, in about eight or ten years. Uh, along with that, we also have the uh, uh, senior living trust fund, which was virtually down to nothing here about three or four years ago. We now have that past half full to sit with about $170 million. We want to make sure that we keep our fiscal house in order. Uh, as Senator Gronstall talked earlier, we want to focus on uh, middle class families and make sure that they have a voice here in state government. And one of the ways we do that is maintaining, uh, keeping the fiscal house in order. So we're going to continue that, and we're also going to continue our uh, commitments that we made last year. Uh, last year, we uh, focused on uh, education, as Senator Gronstall talked about. Our goal is to continue those commitments in the area of, uh, of uh, teacher quality, early childhood, maintaining our commitments there. We're probably going to be a couple other areas in education that we'll talk about as well, but there will be a huge focus on that. And the other issue, too, is we are going to focus on what we can do to expand health care this session. Uh, we did a start last year where we created a health care fund. The goal of that health care fund was to expand access to health care. The Department of Human Services said that we expanded health care to 17,000 islands with what we did last year. We're going to continue that commitment. We're waiting for what the... Uh, the uh, uh, hatch Fading Commission comes up with here in the next month, but we're planning on acting on at least portions of whatever they propose. So we're very excited about those opportunities that, for this upcoming session. Senator? Uh, I too want to thank you for coming this afternoon. <clears throat> One of the issues we did in the 07 session was keep our commitment on paying back the Senior Living Trust. We paid back about $180 million dollars and we're about halfway there, and that's what the aging groups and the older Iowa legislature, that was their number one priority. We kept our word in that area. Uh, I received more, more mail in the last uh, two or three months from students from public universities and, and as well as private for what we did for education in the 07 session. And, and handwritten notes and letters, people really appreciate that. Uh, I met recently, and most of the legislature has, uh, with the highway patrol throughout the state. And, uh, and their thank yous were for, for paying the salaries of state employees 
and, and so they can get the equipment they need that they haven't been able to purchase, whether it's automobiles or technology equipment uh, out there to provide more public safety. And so uh, there's just so many things that we did in this 07 session that we've neglected over the years. And, and we need to keep our commitments in this session that's coming up. But I think the public is, uh, is uh, appreciates what we've done. And, uh, and so we need to continue to listen to Iowans out there and continue to go and, and, and meet with all our local folks in a large rural area like I serve with 49 uh, uh, cities. Uh, you know, these mayors and, and uh, 15 school districts, and, and, and they've all got questions about uh, uh, what we did in, in 07 and, and, and a lot of the implementation of those rules on what we did have not all been implemented yet. So I continue to tell them to pay attention to what these rules say. And uh, so uh, the people out there are listening, and, and, and they certainly, in my opinion, appreciate uh, what we did. Thank you. One of the things that uh, I think that we have shown by our uh, session last year and that we're going to continue to show is, yes, we're going to do uh, the things that people expect of Democrats. We're going to focus on education. We're going to focus on strengthening health care. We're going to focus on renewable energy. Uh, we're going to focus on uh, early childhood education. Um, but we're also going to do some things that the public sometimes has been historically skeptical about in terms of Democrats uh, managing, and that is being responsible with the pocketbook. Uh, and we uh, were very fiscally responsible last year. We're proud of the state of the budget. And one of the things we're going to uh, focus on this year is to continue to show, continue, continue to prove to the voters that we are responsible with the pocketbook. Uh, I think voters, by and large, in Iowa have closed the book on the Republicans being able to be uh, responsible uh, budget makers. But they haven't yet opened the book on the Democrats, and that's one of the things we're going to focus on. Uh, you know, just last year during the budget uh, battle uh, towards the end of the year in the House, and it was a battle, because we as Democrats continually had to beat back amendment after amendment after amendment that the Republicans were offering to try to uh, bust the budget. In fact, I have a sheet of paper here. We went back and added them up. Uh, the Republicans offered in the House 67 amendments on the budget bill that would have spent an additional $699 million. Now, I've been in an argument repeatedly with Senator Rostel because I keep, kept using the word that uh, uh, the number 700 million, and he said, no, it's actually 699 million. Uh, so I stand corrected. Uh, there was a rhetorical question asked by uh, the leader of the Republican Party during this budget battle. He said, where is the printing press? I want to know where the money printing press is. Well, I just want to let everyone know that we searched and searched and we have found it. It's in uh, Christopher Ramsey's office. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So are you guys ruling out any type of tax increase during the coming session? I, I think there continues to be a significant uh, number of our caucus and, and a lot of I was talking about uh, transportation infrastructure needs in the state. I think uh, I think there's a willingness to pursue in a bipartisan way uh, with the Republicans um, something of the additional resources in the revenue tax fund. I wouldn't characterize what that number is yet. I wouldn't characterize uh, anything as being on the table or off the table in that context. We're interested in taking a look at that and working with uh, working with the other party to see if there's a consensus on on moving forward in that area. There is, we'll pursue it. You guys are just said in the hallway that the gas tax is off the table. Are you looking at some other options for raising revenue for uh, road infrastructure? I think, there's a, I think there's a host of other options out there. I'd also tell you there's uh, some interest in our caucus in pursuing uh, the statewide penny on, uh, on the local option the school um, infrastructure tax. Uh, so, so I think those things are kind of open, but it's the same thing. It's one of those kinds of things that it's going to need bipartisan cooperation. Um, lacking that is probably not going to happen. I would, I would just want to reemphasize what Senator Brownstall said. In the House last year, I mean, there was many more bills that were passed in a bipartisan effort in the Senate. If it's going to be an issue this year where 51 Democrats have to pass these bills, they're not going to happen. It's going to require a bipartisan effort by Democrats and Republicans whether it's a silo or whether it's a menu of other options for a uh, road fund, uh, it's going to require uh, people working together, uh, Democrats and Republicans working together. But the majority party isn't going to be able to pass these bills in and of them by themselves. It's going to be a bipartisan effort that we'll have to get those done. If they don't, uh, we'll be waiting another year for that. But Democrats are willing to sit down and work with Republicans uh, 
come next month and uh, work in the area of seeing where we can address some of our transportation needs and possibly do 